The most vital part of a race is undoubtedly the race start. Places can be won or lost, and in league racing, where the field can be so closely matched, you don't want to mess it up. One knock, one error, and that's it, race over for you. So yeah, race starts are kind of a big deal, but how do you perfect the launch and then keep out of trouble? Well, count this as your lucky day, because here at Veloce Esports, we have collected five top tips for manual starts. Step one, preparation is key. When it comes to the start of a race, a lot of people just assume it's arrive on the grid, floor it, then navigate turn one, and Bob's your uncle, you're in the lead. Yeah, no, it's not really like that at all. You do actually need to prepare beforehand. Each track is different in terms of distance between the lights and turn one, whilst also taking into consideration the angle of incline or decline you are starting on. A strategy you apply for one circuit may not work for the other, so take your time in practice races, work out where you need to break going into turn one, because chances are you can actually break a lot later than you would do on a normal hot lap. This is dependent on what the other cars around you are doing, of course, but we will get to that later on. Step two, know your formation. Preparation doesn't just mean practice before the race, but also making sure the car is set up for the best possible first lap. If your league or race that you are doing has a formation lap, this is the best place to do this. As you set off, make sure ERS and fuel mix are in the lowest settings they can be. There are rumors, of course, that this resets between the end of the formation lap and the start of the race, but just in case this isn't true, you don't want to risk it. You also need to manage your tire temperatures and your brakes. As you go around for a lap, make sure you are weaving on the straights and doing small little burnouts to get tire temperature up, but don't overdo it because you'll wear your tires out before you even start the race. To get the perfect tire temperature, you will need to go to the temperature screen on your MFD. Now, looking at the carcass temperature, you should be aiming for between 89 and 92 degrees Celsius on the C4 and C5 tires, i.e. the softest tires. And if you are starting on the C1, C2 or C3, then aim for around 92 to 97 degrees Celsius. And if you have absolutely no idea what I'm going on about with C2 tires, then just aim in the middle 92 degrees and hope for the best. As for the brakes, there's no real number that you need to aim for. Just make sure the color for the brakes is in the green and you'll be just fine. Now, final bit of preparation before the start is making sure you are in the right fuel mix and ERS. So as you come into the final corner or before the game takes over, set your ERS to overtake mode as we discussed in our last ERS management video and then fuel to rich mix and wait for the lights to come on. If you avoid formation laps, just make sure as soon as you can, set fuel mix to rich and ERS to overtake four. Step three, look, but don't stare. So you are on the starting grid with ERS in overtake mode and fuel set to rich mix. The lights are coming on, but what do we do here? First, you need to hold in the clutch. This could be a button on your wheel or gamepad, but for most people, they have it set as the upshifter. Then once this is done, you need to get your revs up to an optimal level. This is around 12,000 RPM for a dry track and 9,000 RPM in the wet, but we will talk further about racing in wet weather in a future video. Once you have built up the revs to where you want them, hold your foot or your finger in that position until the lights go out. It's extremely important not to under or over rev the car. Over rev and your build up will spin at the start, causing you to lose time if you save it or end up facing the complete opposite direction if you don't, which is not good at all. Under the car and you are bogged down, again, losing time and positions at the start, or even going into anti-stall, which will more than likely leave you at the back of the grid. Now, all this happens in the space of just a few seconds, so practicing over and over again will help this become second nature to you. Step four, lights out and away they go. Now we have our car on the grid revving away at 12,000 RPM. The clutch is held in, the lights go out. But what do we do? How do we get the perfect launch? As soon as the lights go out, release the clutch, but don't put your foot down straight away. This will cause wheel spin, and as we said before, wheel spin just puts you the wrong way. No, instead, slowly increase the throttle to get a good initial start. Short shifting into second and even third is very important. 
as we look to reduce the wheel spin as much as possible. Once you feel you have complete traction though, that's when you can put your foot to the floor. What if though, we release the clutch too early? Unfortunately, if you do this, you will get a drive through penalty, but don't worry, it happens to the best of us. If you try to do a Sebastian Vettel and stop straight away, the game will still penalize you. The best thing to do if this happens is to just continue perform a normal start and make sure you avoid the stationary cars. Unless you are on a tight track, you should arrive to turn one in first. Now, you have three laps before you have to serve that drive through penalty. So use those three laps in free air to push and try and build a gap. As the cars behind you battle away, you will be able to reduce the amount of penalty you might take and actually not lose that many positions. What if you do the complete opposite though and go into anti-stall at the start? If you do go into anti-stall, reapply the clutch, build some revs and perform a normal start. You want to do this as quickly as possible though to reduce the amount of positions you may lose. Step five, the race isn't won at the first corner. So you've got a good launch and are in the mix going down into turn one. This is probably the most important corner in any race as right here, you could either come out a winner or a loser. It's important to remember though that the race is not over after turn one. So don't try and be a hero sending it up the inside from miles back as chances are you'll run into the back of someone else damaging your front wing or even worse, crashing out of the race entirely. But at the same time, you can't really be cautious because that could leave you as a sitting duck to be overtaken or crash into the back of. It's important to be able to adapt to what is going on around you. For example, if cars are going on the inside, going into turn one, but there's a gap on the outside, you're obviously going to try and move around the outside and vice versa. If you see a gap form in front of you that isn't closing, then we encourage that you go for the overtake. You are a racer after all, and a start is a good chance to pick up positions. However, if you have three cars going side by side on a straight in front of you, the best thing to do is hold position. That will make you vulnerable though to cars behind coming alongside you, but sometimes it's better to lose a position than your whole front wing. And who knows, the three in front of you may crash into each other and you can just drive by waving as you do. So those have been our five top tips on getting a mega start in F1 2019. If you found today's lesson helpful, then be sure to like and subscribe for more Esports 101. Check out our other playlists as well for more tips and tricks on F1 2019 and leave a comment down below with what you would like help with next. But until the next one, I've been Hayden from Veloce Esports and we will see you next time.